Hello and welcome back to my channel What If Deku 2.0. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off part 1 of our series, What If Deku Was Class 1A's Senior? If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Jace underscore is underscore dead from archive of our own. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. Whoa, you're so good at this Miss Ray. Yuraraka complimented the woman as she watched her make a latte. Oh please, just Ray is fine Yuraraka, I insist. Right, Ray chuckled at the girl's eagerness. Well look at you too, you're practically naturals. They both smiled, but it was obvious Ray wasn't okay, still nothing. No, she looked to the ground, they have the others looking but nothing yet. I'm sure he just lost track of time. Yuraraka tried to comfort her, but it did little for her mood. Maybe. Come on, let's not dwell too much. Why don't you two start that cupcake recipe while I watch the front? Mayumi offered, pushing them both towards where they kept their supplies, It'll let you relax, and if you hear anything you can leave right away okay, Ray. Thank you, Mayumi. No problem at all. Kid's great, and I'm worried too. Can't imagine what you feel like right now. The white-haired woman rubbed her arm. It's very stressful. Haven't felt like this since Dabai first went missing. Yuraraka patted her back before steering her towards one of the mixing bowls. It's okay, Ray. We'll make the best cupcakes for when he gets back. Thank you, Yuraraka. You're a sweetheart. As the two worked, Mayumi checked on them every few minutes to give them tips or make sure they hadn't missed anything, which Ray appreciated a lot. Excuse me? They both looked up to see two girls around Yuraraka's age standing at the counter. We talked to Miss Mayumi and she said you knew about Izuku. Is he all right? Sorry, you are? Oh, I apologies. My name is Momo Yayurazu, and this is Kayoka Jiro. Izuku usually helps us with our school work. Yeah, I talk music with his brother sometimes, and we knew he'd be out for his training, but she made it sound like something happened. Ray looked at the ground sadly while Yuraraka patted her back again. No one's heard from him since this morning. Momo gasped while Jiro winced. That's terrible. Are you close with him? Yes, he's like a son to me and has helped my family in so many ways I just, I don't want anything to happen to him. She carefully wiped her eyes with her hands before Momo handed her a tissue, thank you. Of course, I'm so sorry, I hope he's okay. I'm sure he's fine, the guy seems tough, Jiro said as she sat down on one of the stools. By the way, what's your name? Oh, you're Araka Ochako. The girls were quick to dissolve into different conversations, Jiro and Yuraraka talking about their music preferences while Momo and Ray talked about fashion. They all lost track of time until Ray's phone started buzzing. Oh, she pulled it out of her apron and saw Inko, Inko, any news? Ah, Ray, oh my god, I... She quickly began taking her uniform off, getting the other's attention. He's here but H he's hurt, and I just please can you bring the kids I. I'll be right there Inko, take deep breaths, I'll be right there. She hung up and looked to Mayumi, they found him, I need to leave. Get out of here, we got it. Let us know what happened. Stay safe. The trip to the hospital had been a mostly quiet endeavor with all of the teens to anxious to talk. Even Katsuki had been silent. Ray had to admit she was proud of her son though. Throughout the trip he had comforted Hitoshi and Shouto, while the original Baka squad all stuck together and whispered their own comforts. She offered her own silent support to the teens and the oldest with pats, smiles, and small nudges. When they made it to the hospital, though all bets were off, all the teens immediately rushing in and asking questions faster than the poor staff could answer. Children, all of them jumped as Inko shouted, P please stop bothering them. All of them quickly rushed over to Inko, giving her a giant group hug as she cried. Mom, Dubby what happened? Is he okay? 
Hitoshi himself looked close to tears. The only thing keeping him even semi-calm was Katsuki gripping his hand tightly. He's okay now, they all breathed a sigh of relief. Luckily Aizawa and the girls found him after he called them. Wait so what happened, Denki asked, looking much calmer than he had before. While on his way back, he ran into a little girl and was helping her, of course he was. She was running from a man and Izuku was protecting her and the man. The man shot him twice. What? She nodded but waved her hand a little. The damage wasn't too bad luckily. According to his doctor, he was lucky he was trained since the first bullet could have killed him had he not dodged. Can we visit him? We can, but... The little girl is still here. From what Aizawa was able to gather and tell me, it was likely a villain she was running from, and she has no other family. Hitoshi threw his hands up with a sigh. Guy goes missing and picks up another sister. That got a few of the others to laugh, but it was obvious that Dabai was still anxious. Exactly, so when you go in be gentle all right? She seems to scare easy and Izuku is on some very good drugs right now. Dude, hi senpai we gotta see this. The teens all ran off, leaving Dabai, Ray, and Inko in the hallway. Ray looked to her son but he only shook his head. It's alright mom, go with them. She hesitated, giving him a hug before following the children. As soon as she was gone Dabai's shoulders began to shake, his breathing coming out more rushed. Oh honey, Inko walked forward and pulled Dabai into a tight hug, letting the teen quietly cry into her shoulder, he's okay, he'll be okay, we'll make sure of it. Sorry, I just... It's okay, she rubbed his back slowly as he began to calm down, I'm glad my son has someone like you to love and care for him. Oh God, now I'm crying more. Inko laughed and pulled away. Looks like you're ready for the Midori and name them, she gave him a wink before patting his shoulder, now let's go check on our boy, okay? All right. Everything felt a little hazy at the moment, his vision fading in and out as he laid on the hospital bed. He knew Eri was sitting on the bed next to him, curled into his side while Himiko and Suzuki entertained her. Kid? He hummed and turned towards Aizawa. Yep, you're drugged a lot. Nuh! He heard snickering off to the side and turned to the girls with a glare, W.H. laughing. And nothing is he, don't worry. Yeah man, he squinted at them and shifted around, pulling Eerie a little closer, though she didn't seem to mind. Is he okay? He's all right, Aizawa assured, ruffling his student's hair, but since he was hurt they don't want him in pain, so they gave him something to make him feel better, just makes him tired and a little loopy. But he's okay? Don't worry, Arai. The doctors here are going to fix him right up. Fix him? At the little girl's fear, Izuku patted her head. SHHH, just a little ta make sure all the holes are closed. He tapped his stomach and shoulder, only here. As so they want remake you. Nope, he smiled slightly dopey at her, just a few stitches that seemed to calm her down though she still held onto his arm tightly though. Okay? Plus, we'll make sure no one does anything, Himiko added, we're his family so we'll protect him. Like he protected me. Exactly, she calmed down more, though it didn't last long as someone knocked on the door. Come in. As soon as the words left Aizawa's mouth, he regretted it. The door practically fell open as sixteen stumbled in with an older woman behind them obviously trying not to laugh as most of them fell. It's okay, Arai, these are just our friends and siblings, Himiko assured, trying to get the little girl to relax. They're perfectly harmless, just really loud. You're loud. Cats, dude, she said to be quiet. Now you're yelling, Hitoshi rolled his eyes and went to his sister and brother, looking down at Eri. My name's Hitoshi, what's yours? Irei. He nodded before looking to Izuku. How high are you? The teen gasped and tried to cover Iri's ears, though he missed and ended up just holding her head. Hitoshi Midoriya, who told you about drugs? Oh wow he's like really out of it. 
Himiko giggled before pulling out her phone. We recorded him ranting about how much he loves us. I'll send it to the chat later. I think he started crying halfway through. He also called Aizawa Sensei Dad. The group looked to the teacher who only shrugged. Is this your little brother? Eri asked, pointing to Hitoshi. Izuku gasped again before reaching over and grabbing Hitoshi's arm, though it was awkward with Aizawa trying to make sure the teen didn't pull his stitches. Yes, as my baby brother. Hitoshi grabbed his hand and crouched down. He's so small, Izuku got his hand out of his brother's grip and grabbed his face instead. H, he's so small and I just... Suddenly the teen burst into tears. Why is he so small? Izuku, I'm the same height as you. Iri looked between them worriedly. Don't worry, he gets like this when he's really tired too. Probably just needs to sleep it off. That's what she said, Iri pointed to Himiko this time. Are you two siblings too? Yep, Hido and Katsuki found me and brought me to their house, just like Izuku found you. Does that mean I get to live with you too? We hope so, Ray sat down in one of the open chairs. We would love to have you, Iri. Are you their mom? Lil bit. The woman chuckled at Izuku's slurred words. I'm not their mother, but I do help take care of them. I'm Shouto and Dabai's mother. Shouto waved when he heard his name, though he seemed heavily engrossed in the argument still happening between the teens. So they have two moms. Pretty much. So if Izuku takes care of me, does that make him my mom? That got the rest of them to pay attention. Yes, Mina nodded quickly. Izuku's your mom. You should call him that. Somewhere we can see so we can record his reaction, Siro added. Aizawa sighed and rolled his eyes, laying a careful hand on Iri's shoulder. I'm sure problem child won't care what you call him as long as you're comfortable, so ignore the miscreants, okay? She nodded slowly. Good. We can try and explain family dynamics more to you later. I'm sure Nedzu will be more than happy to have another student. Who's Nedzu? Rat God lives in the vents. That got most of the group to double over laughing. Ignore the high nerd, Kaken, I would never do drugs. He's in the FCK clouds. Nedzu's the principal of a school, she hummed before tilting her head at Katsuki, Katsuki Bakugu. I'm friends with the lunatics laughing right now. She seemed to mumble the words to herself before smiling at the blonde. How's he doing? The group turned to Dabai and Inko, seeming to finally collect themselves. He's not too bad, right? Dabai, the white-haired teen, looked to the bed and smiled. Hi, I missed you. He let out a huff and dragged a chair over to the side of the bed. Missed you too. How are you feeling? I am so great right now, but also really tired and everything's fuzzy. That's because you're on drugs, babe. Izuku gasped and smacked the other's shoulder. Oh, what was that for? Why does everyone think I do drugs? He looked to his mom, who was covering her mouth to stop herself from laughing. Mom, I promise I'm not doing drugs. I, I know, honey. He nodded to himself before laying back down. Dabai rolled his eyes before smiling at Ere. I'm Dabai, you must be Irai, she smiled back. He keep you safe, huh? He did. He was really fast and smart. Sounds like him, Suzuki giggled and nudged the other, shut up. Who are you to him? Dabai paused at the question. Those are his siblings and friends, she pointed to the teens. Those are his parents, she gestured to Aizawa, Rei, and Inko. So who are you? Oh well, I'm his boyfriend, plus Rei and Shouto are my family. What's a boyfriend? Do you know that parents are sometimes married? She nodded. Well, me and Izuku are like, except less. Suddenly she frowned, her lips wobbling a little. As so you don't love him? What? He moved closer, ruffling her hair a little. No, of course I love him. We just aren't married. Suddenly Izuku's hand shot out and grabbed his arm. Yes, we should get married. The entire room froze, though Dabai could suddenly feel Aizawa burning holes into him. T, that's, um, maybe later Izuku. The teen nodded seriously. 
You're right, we can get married after I take a nap. I'm too tired to plan a wedding right now. Then Izuku was asleep, leaving Dabai to deal with the group. He looked to Aizawa who was still glaring daggers. You can't kill me, it was his idea, I didn't say anything. That seemed to break some of the tension as most of the group started laughing. When you guys get married can we be the flower girls? Kaminari gestured to himself, Siro, and Mina cause I feel like we get dibs on that. Not adults, adults. Stepdad, I'm sure someone told you guys, but we found him. He's okay now, but he was shot twice. Detective Tsukachi and Eraserhead are doing a full investigation while he recovers. Plus, we have another new kid. Pet bird, what hospital well visit? Wine aunt, I'll send the address and room over, but make sure to knock. The happily married couple is on their honeymoon. Stepdad, any preference on where I dump your body or can I choose? Actual adult, I'm glad he's okay now. But what do you mean Suzuki? Gay cousin. Izzy was really high and asked Dabai to marry him XD. Family doctor. Did you say yes? Stepdad. No. We're both still teenagers and he's still in high school. Pet rabbit. That the only thing stopping you? Stepdad. Shut. Up. Wine aunt. Actually Dabai said not right now. Stepdad. You no longer get to choose the burial ground. Pet bird, my intern's getting married. Pet bird, dead body guy, you better treat him right or else. Stepdad, UFCK know my name feathers for brains. Stepdad, also FCK off, I treat him amazingly. Wine ant, I have proof. Family doctor, send it. Pet rabbit, send it. Wine ant, Parents and child the photo showed Dabai laying against the headboard of the hospital bed with a sleeping Izuku snuggled into his chest and a sleeping Eri curled into their laps. Actual adult, I'm getting this framed. You didn't tell me I was an aunt. I'm crying this is so cute. Family doctor, when did you get a daughter? Stepdad, it's the kid Izuku was saving. We're pretty sure a villain was keeping her in like a basement or some SHT, and when she escaped Izuku saved her so she's living with us now. Gay cousin, she called Izzy her mom. Wine aunt, also totally thought Aizawa sensei was going to kill Dabai when Izuku said they should get married. Actual adult, I can't believe my little brother has a daughter. She's adorable, looks exactly like you both. Stepdad, no? Family doctor, she kinda does man, white wavy hair, Izuku has curly and you got spikes equal sign wavy, plus she's kinda pale like you. Stepdad, okay first of all that is not how genetics works. Family doctor, I'm a doctor you're not. Stepdad, you are a sports physical therapist. Stepdad, plus if anything you make it sound like I had an affair or she's my child from another marriage if she looks so much like me. Wine aunt, can't believe you cheated on Izuku with Katsuki for the pros he has red eyes and pale skin she has red eyes. Pet bird, thanks you cheated on your lovely wife. Stepdad, shouldn't I be the wife? He's the one with a better job in the future. Family doctor, woo woo that's sexist, slash slash. Stepdad, my best example is end whore. Gay cousin, fair, will allow the sexism. Actual adult, it's okay Dabai, you can set the example for your daughter by being a stay-at-home dad while Izuku works. Stepdad, okay, but if we got married would he let me? Wine aunt, gay? You're so gay, in front of the children? Family doctor, I can't believe my brother wants to be a trophy husband. Stepdad, 2000 yen says Shouto wants to be a trophy husband too. Family doctor, I'm not betting against that. He'll marry the first person that fully listens to his theories without laughing. Dabai looked up from his phone as Izuku began shifting around, groaning slightly when he stretched his side. Careful bunny, he put his phone down, instead resting his hands on the bandages and using his quirk just enough to warm them. How are you feeling? Izuku practically melted as the warmth seeped into him. HM, he opened his eyes slowly, 
looking around the room and seeing Himiko and Suzuki laughing at their phones, while Shouto, Hitoshi, and Katsuki were all asleep on another hospital bed, where is everyone? Parents went out to get clothes and food, Aizawa is at the station with a detective, and the other kids had to go home finally. Izuku nodded, slowly sinking back down and sighing as Dabai held him tighter. Aw Tilda is Dabai keeping the wife happy? Both the teens froze as Suzuki teased them. Oh God! Himiko started laughing with her. Did Izzy remember Tilda? Oh God! He turned his head into Dabai's chest, blushing more when he felt the older's rumbling laughter. It's okay, I thought it was sweet, Izuku groaned, plus I personally, he leaned closer so he could whisper into Izuku's ear, would love to get married to you whenever you want. Shut up, he felt Dabai take a deep breath, shut up. You are a heating pad and heating pads don't talk. Careful, wouldn't want to wake up your new baby Tilda. Would you, Izuku cut himself off as he felt something move. Looking down he saw Iri curled against them, holding a small stuffed cat. Oh my god, please tell me you have pictures. A whole folder. Himari, you're the best. Izuku was bored. He had only been in the hospital for a little over a day, at least with him awake, and he already wanted out. Suzuki and Himiko had went back to training. Aizawa was investigating with Tsukachi. Rei and Dabai were at work. All the kids were back at their homes or hanging out, and Eri was with Nedzu getting tested for her grade level. The only person he was seeing a lot of was his mother, which he loved, but she was still at work and couldn't stay much longer than five minutes at a time. He was messing with his laptop that Hitoshi had brought him when he saw a message pop up. Nedzu has added Daybreak. Nedzu, hello Daybreak. With your longevity of your hospital day being undetermined, I have decided to hand over some tests and plans I have that could use your assistance. Daybreak, I would be honored Principal Nedzu. What is it I can help with? Nedzu, well I will send over the written test for the support license so we can get that out of the way. Then the plans involve a little more hands-on work, though it can be done from your computer. I'll send over all of the details. When Hawks and Maruko were finally able to visit, Izuku had finished all of the tests and was working on gathering information about the Hero Commission. I, little bunny foo foo, he hummed, not looking up from his computer or acknowledging the strange name, me and Bird Brain have brought food. It was my idea, obviously. Hawks lightly shoved Izuku and joined him on the hospital bed while Maruko took the spare one, but we got your. The hero cut himself off and stared at the screen for a moment. Are those hero commission files? No, both heroes laughed. Izuku, I don't care if you go through their files. He took his drink from Maruko. I might work for them, but if they're electronic security SCK, that's on them. Amen, FCK those guys. He sent one of his feathers to push the woman, but she only laughed harder before throwing a fry. Oh. You should totally try to find my file, Izuku stared at him. I'm serious, I don't even get to look at that thing and it's about me. If you're sure, Hawks, while I do that you guys can look through my analysis, he nodded over to his bag where he had a few notebooks on him, the language key should be on my phone. He tossed the device to Maruko who smirked as Izuku focused back on the screen. I'm gonna text your friends so much SHT. The teen hummed again, clearly not listening. Maruko leave his stuff alone. No way, I'm telling his boyfriend he's cheating on him with you. Oh please like he'd believe that. Good work, Yuraraka pumped her fists, go ahead and get some water while we take a break. Right, Dabai watched the girl before turning to his own things and grabbing his water and phone. He scrolled through some of the chats the kids had been talking in before seeing a few messages from Izuku. Izuku, I am in love with Hawks. Izuku, he is such a better kisser than you emwa emwa. Dabai, all right this is either the bunny or the bird so who's fessing up? Izuku, this is very clearly your boyfriend. Dabai, I'm telling my sister. Izuku, wait no she's so hot don't tell her. 
Dabai, you? Don't call my sister hot when you're using my boyfriend's phone. Izuku, you're the one that brought her up. Dabai, because I knew if it was the bunny one it would get you to stop. Izuku, okay but like can I flirt with her? Dabai, she's a grown adult? Izuku, hey according to some of these texts you freaked when someone flirted with your mom. Dabai, because that's my FCK mom and she was like recently in a mental hospital. Fayumi wasn't. Izuku, fair, I'm gonna FCK with your friends more. The teen rolled his eyes before tossing his phone and turning back as Yuraraka jogged up. All right, we got another 30 minutes before my brother and his friends come in for training, Yuraraka pouted a little. Ya yeah, know you can stay later, right? It won't cost anything extra and the little SHT love adding people to their collection. I, I know that, she paused. Well, not the last part really, but I just, um... I've never been good with people my age, I guess. I think Izuku, Yamomo, and Gyro are the closest I've gotten. Dabai smiled a little. You sound like my little brother, and me, he put a hand on her shoulder. Listen, it never gets easier to talk to people, but you can make it feel easier if you just do it. Push through that anxiety and talk to them. And if that doesn't work, think of it this way, their main friend Bakugu. He calls them all mean nicknames and have told all of us to die more than once. If you're even a smidgen friendlier than him, then you're winning. Really? Really, he's a weird kid, but the little SHT pretty much has a boyfriend and an entire group willing to work with his shitty personality that finally got her to laugh. So let's train a bit more, and if we need to we sneak you out, alright? Right. Good, now let's do this. Izuku didn't know if their security SCK or if his system was just that good, because no teenager in a hospital armed with only a laptop should be able to access every single hero commission file to exist. He even had access to old ones that someone tried to delete. Daybreak, I got all the files. Do you want me to look for something specific or just send them over? Nedzu, feel free to send them over as well as look through what you wish. The more who know the merrier. Hawks, are you sure you're okay with me reading your file? Told ya, I don't care kid, go for it. I'm a little interested what they have on me anyway. They don't even let me see it. Izuku hesitated at that. From the few files he had skimmed it didn't look good. Especially when he knew the HC had been the ones to cover up what Endeavor had done. Hey, as long as you're sure. The two heroes practically waved him off as they went back to whatever they were doing on their phones. It took him a moment of searching, but he found Hawks's file seen enough. It looked larger than most of the heroes they had on file, and when he opened it he found out why. The file started out when he was five, talking about their recruitment of him, his quirk, and why they wanted him in the first place. Opening a few more connected files, he was able to see videos and notes from when they were training him. Hawks, you started training at five? That got even Maruko to pause, who stared at her friend intensely. Yep, practically grabbed me off the street when I saved some people. He seemed to finally notice the silence. What? That's FCK up. You know that, right? Well, I mean, yeah, I guess, but I wanted the training. Hawks, you were five, Izuku couldn't pull his eyes away from the video, even if you wanted the training they shouldn't have let you. Dude, you started training young. But my mom chose the classes and only let me learn self-defense for a while. The winged hero frowned a bit. I guess it's one of those things you just don't think about for a while. Maruko and Izuku shared a look before the teen went back to the files. Each new video of the training or document made him feel sick. He looked up to Hawks in a lot of ways. Seeing one of the heroes closest to him be trained like that made him think of Dabai and Shouto, both of them telling the horror stories of how Endeavor would train them. After going through each file that was connected to Hawks, he paused. How old did you just turn? Just turned 22. Why? Izuku took a moment pulling up the hero's personal information before checking the dates of all the training, Izuku, why are you asking? You're not 22. What? 
You're not 22, Izuku moved as both heroes joined him on the bed. They did a training update every month, but they stopped when you started being a full-time pro. It doesn't add up to 22, it adds up to 18. The teen let Hawks pull the laptop closer, checking the information for himself. Hawk. Don't call me that, Maruko frowned but put a hand on his shoulder. What the FCK? His voice broke a bit. Keigo, Izuku moved closer to the hero. What do you want to do? The blonde stared at him, seeming to think, before suddenly standing up. I'm, I'm gonna go for a flight. He went over to the window and popped it open, flying out quickly. It's HD, stay here kid, I'll keep an eye on him. Maruko assured before jumping out the window and following after the other hero. Izuku stared at the open window before turning back to his computer. Daybreak, I want to destroy the hero commission. Nedzu, it would be my pleasure. Did you guys see the text from Izuku? That was definitely one of the heroes. My money's on Maruko. The group kept chatting and joking as they walked through the gym. About time you little SHT showed up. Shouto was quick to detach from the group and hug his brother while the others set their stuff down. Ah, is the burn victim cranky without his boyfriend? Ah, is the orphan cranky without his brother? Touché, Hitoshi shrugged his jacket off, finally noticing the other person in the room. Oh hey, don't you work with Izuku? Why yes, she offered him a hand with a tight smile, Yuraka Ochako. Hitoshi. He tried not to laugh as it was obvious the girl was nervous. What's this? Denki laid an arm across Hitoshi's shoulders, ignoring the burning glare of Katsuki, who might this be? This is Yuraka, she works with Izuku. You work with his man himself? That's sick. We just bother him at work. That got the girl to loosen up a little, but you train here. Yeah, Izuku actually suggested it. Then Miss Ray said her son worked here. Makes sense, what's your quirk? Oh, um, anything I touch with all five fingers becomes weightless. Cyril let out a low whistle. That's pretty sick. I can see why you're training with Dabai though. He's the best. He's been really patient with me. Of course he has, look what he has to deal with. They all turned to see Dabai and Shadow still hugging, though it was more obvious Dabai was trying to let go. Fucker, Denki laughed as he dodged a kick from Katsuki, hands to yourself beach. The group started laughing as Hitoshi blushed and tried to hide his face, who the FCK is pink cheeks here. You must be Bakugu, my name's Yuraka. The group started laughing harder. S. She's heard about you. Oh my god. She knew it was you. That's even better. Shut the FCK up. Not adults, adults. Stepdad. Hey babe, are you good for visitors? Single mother. Sure. I'm just going over some files and plans with Nedzu. Single mother. Oh, don't forget to pick up Iri from your sister please. Actual adult. They already got her from me. Like a good stepdad. Stepdad, I hate you. Actual adult, I want to be best man. All of the teenagers and Iri were spread out around the room, Yuraka quickly being adopted by Shouto and Hitoshi surprisingly, while the Baka squad all clambered onto the open bed and Dabai and Iri sitting with Izuku on the bed. So where'd the heroes run off to? Oh, um, Izuku wasn't sure what he should say, but he knew it would be best if Hawks told people himself, they got called away for some work. Dabai stared at him before sighing. Whatever you say, baby. Izuku smiled at him before feeling his phone go off. Maruko? Did something happen? He could hear the wind rushing on the other side of the line and someone breathe heavily. Well, how do you feel about a hospital, buddy? What? Maruko, what happened? That got the other's attentions. Kid, he burned his wings. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through What If Deku Was Claus 1A Senior? I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout-out to Jace underscore is underscore dead for crafting such a compelling story.
Don't forget to check out their profile on Archive of Our Own for more amazing works the link is in the description below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to What If Deku 2.0 for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.